In this video, we're going to be discussing one of the special tests used in the detection of upper motor neuron lesions, and that is the pronator drift sign. To assess for the pronator drift sign, the patient will be positioned in seated or standing. I'm going to be demonstrating this in the standing position here. The patient is instructed to bring their shoulders, both of them, to 90 degrees of flexion with the elbows straight and palms facing upward. In other words, the forearms and hands are totally supinated. And the patient attempts to hold this position with the eyes closed for 30 seconds. The time does not begin until the eyes are closed, and they should be able to maintain that supination for the full 30 seconds. That would be normal. And if the patient is able to maintain this position for 30 seconds, then that would suggest that they do not have an upper motor neuron lesion. That being said, what constitutes a positive test? Well, a positive test would be indicated by one or both forearms slowly going from the supinated position toward pronation. And they don't have to become totally pronated. They could go to neutral. But the point is the patient cannot maintain that supination. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So again, same test position. Time begins when the eyes close. And look at my right arm there. It's very subtle. But you can see very slowly, as my eyes are closed, I'm losing that supination. And it's going toward pronation. That is called a pronator drift. I would call that a right pronator drift. Okay. So just to reiterate here, you don't have to have total loss of supination and go to end range pronation for this to constitute a positive test. However, notice that really subtle and slow loss of supination, even if it only gets to radio ulnar neutral right there, that would still constitute a positive test and I would have a pronator drift sign on my right upper extremity, not the left. Okay. Now note down here that a positive pronator drift sign normally suggests an upper motor neuron lesion is present in the contralateral pyramidal tract. So if my pronator drift sign is in my right upper extremity there, then that would suggest that the lesion is in the left pyramidal tract because it's contralateral. So in general, if you have a contralateral upper motor neuron lesion, you would probably would see, in addition to the radio ulnar pronation, you'd see the affected upper extremity actually slightly drift downward. Okay? But in some cases, you can have an ipsilateral lesion, either in the cerebellum or the DCML tract. Remember, the dorsal columns, medial lemniscus pathway. Okay? So again, if it were these cases, so I have a right pronator drift sign, then it would be a right cerebellar lesion or a right DCML lesion. And in those cases, you would see the affected upper extremity drift a little bit upward in addition to that radio ulnar pronation. Now, this group of individuals in 2002 determined the psychometrics for the pronator drift sign in the detection of unilateral cerebral lesions. Cerebral. So this is not cerebellar. This is not DCML. This is specifically unilateral cerebral lesions. And what they found is that the sensitivity and specificity were both excellent, 92% and 90% respectively. So if somebody had a negative pronator drift sign, there's a 92% chance that they do not have a unilateral cerebral lesion. However, if they have a positive pronator drift sign, there's a 90% chance that they do have a unilateral cerebral lesion. Okay? And in that case, it would be a contralateral cerebral lesion. In this case over here, it would be on the left side of my brain because the pronator drift sign is on my right upper extremity. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.